the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. That's what we do. We try to create our own image. We get offended. Somebody don't like it, how your shoes look. Don't like where you live at. See, well, you see, if they were to go to show up crying out to God while they're out there protesting, uh -huh. and they just stop it periodically, fall down on their knees and go to worship and cry out to God, you'll Somebody, see a move. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, yes, but see, yes. God wants to know, do you think that you can get this done? Or do you think you need me to get it done? Come on. Come on. You see, you see, your action tell God where you at. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What okay. system are you relying? Right. Are you relying on your own system, your own self? You know, even when we talk yeah. about what we Auto do. System. Huh? I see even the world system, and that that that's become the, and I praise God for this day because the distinction is becoming a lot more clear. These two systems really are as this said a long time to dive into the opposed to each other. These systems have nothing to do with one another. Nope. They are at odds to each other. God put in between us and the other system. Right. And so when we try to employ the other system's methods to do things, it inherently doesn't work for us. Just that the other system using our methods don't work for it either. <laughs> so I mean so so it's like, it's like you're gonna either be a part of one or a part of the other. And we'll be taught the expectations of what happens when we have yoked ourselves with that particular system. Yeah. And it is a system. They are systems. We and, and, and the thing about it, we try to I, I think the fact is that like if you get upset when somebody's an alcoholic, if you get upset because uh somebody in your family is not receiving Christ, uh and don't understand, right. don't understand. we need to understand it just about matters anymore you, you know <laughs> what, what i saw I'm sorry. Huh? What I, I began to see pain it, it, it caused me to begin to see pain and something a lot different than i had yeah because there's some things that happened to my family members that they experienced some hardship mine that i would never have brought them into fellowship with <laughs> but their hardship was actually enhanced their relationship with the lord yeah I wouldn't have thought that upon them on a personal note, you know. But it was something that I needed to go So they're being brought into that kingdom, uh, as long as they're the rough side of the mountain. Very painful experience. Disheartening, yeah. disappointing. But then the world has manifested itself to be everything that God said it was going to be. Disheartening, disappointing, betrayals, and all of that right there. And so they're, they're now they're losing their affinity for this system. And, and so in, in discipling them, my thing is to keep reminding them there's another way to do this. <laughs> you know, there's another system you can try to do. It is a lot better than what you're in right now. And trying to draw them out of the world system. So, and I'm seeing where, and if I, if I can, I'll get along with it, but I'm seeing where once we're able to comply with this kingdom of God, once we're able to get in there, this manifestation is physical as well. So, so, did you notice, did you notice that the verse is in 2 Corinthians, all uh, conform to if any man come after me, yeah. let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Yeah. All, all Paul is pretty much doing is expounding to us what Jesus was really trying to get us to understand. Yeah, yeah, and, and don't, don't get hung up on the world system. Nice. <laughs> you try to change that you can't. Ah, die. Ah, you listen. You are God that already declared you dead. Act like it. <laughs> Stop. Act like you dead. <laughs> yeah, I think that's discipleship. <laughs> Uh, it's a gift that nobody wants to receive. <laughs> but if you receive it, 
all of creation is at your fingertips. It's right there, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> the spiritual corner has come along and declared you dead. Yeah. And then you realize, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But then you, you'll quote the verse, I'm crucified with Christ. And, 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 then, and then we get out there alive and, and somebody says something, you hit your feeling. I did. <laughs> yeah. No, you got it. You got it either. You, either you are dead or you're not. Come on. Come on. That's the issue right there. And that's denying yourself daily and discipline yourself daily to sit there and say, God, you know, like, I think really, I think the ultimate uh, denying yourself vision was when he was sent on that cross. He said, for the joy that was set before him, not what was happening to him, but what was set before him, he endured the cross. And when we're looking at life, we need to look at what's before us, not what's in front of us. And see, here's a really thing that I think God put in place that cannot be counterfeited. So, so when you obey God's voice, talk about the spirit of God who is in you now, right. who, who is to speak and to lead you. When you obey God's voice, see, I think something happens every time you obey. Mm. A little growth? See, see, God does something uh -huh. unique every time you obey. Okay. <laughs> and when you when you begin to now grow in your obedience, and really, really, that's what Paul was talking about, that your faith, he said, add to your faith. Yeah. You see, then I think we move on now to the fullness mm. of what God has purposed for us in Christ. Right. I think every time you obey, God, God does something that images you. Mm. I think so. It, it, listen, we, it's good to have these discussions. That's all well and good because these discussions give you a chance for imaging. Mm -hmm. But these discussions are not imaging. Come on now. Okay. The imaging happens when you take what you have what you have heard. Come on now. And allow the spirit of God to work on obedience in you. Uh -huh. I think that's how God is chiseling and yeah. shaping and yeah. fashioning you. Yeah. And usually that's in the form of persecution. Uh huh. Well, it's well, it's usually painful. Hey, look. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. and some of the some of the stuff is that this that something is considered painful is just by observing what's going on in this world system and taking up the your frustrations yeah, you're right. with it. When you need to sit there yeah. and say, they don't know. I ain't gonna hug up on that. Bearing yeah, the, the, the cross yeah. is not supposed to be a pleasurable thing. No. It's supposed to be a painful thing. <laughs> yeah. You said before him, you know, he knew he was getting on the third day, and we do too. I mean, it ain't like these guys knew when they died, they were gonna get up. They right. knew it. Right. And it drove. And because they had exercised authority over a lot of the things that the flesh, this realm has succumbed to them. They were able to manipulate this realm, even though the resurrection had, had, had manifested itself yet, they were pretty much assured that it was going to take place. So that, that's the thing that's become a lot more solid in my mind, that, that I literally am being conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ and Saturday, not only in, you know, character, but also in, in configuration physical we are going to receive it. you think about jesus in the garden knowing what's coming at him uh, knowing what is getting ready to be unleashed upon him knowing uh, in, in, in the moment of agony yet he yeah, clings, he claims to this ain't about me why is it he, he clings to the fact that as ugly as this thing gonna get it, and it's gonna get real ugly. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, yeah. that will be done. I, I, you talking about you talking about denial of self? Yes, sir. Come on now. 
Hey, 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 I think I think most people, at least my perspective, and let you have some I can see think differently. I think the part about that separation from God was what the most agony piece that he had. That separation. He knew that there's gonna be a point where I'm gonna turn my back on you. And if you ever notice, Bishop, all that stuff he went to, we, we love to talk about they spit on him, they slapped him, they put the thorns on him, they whipped him, they canonized him. We look at that and say, that's what he was agonizing over. I think that agonizing was when the first time he screamed out, he didn't scream out until they slapped him. <laughs> yeah. with God, I, think all, I think all of it was agonizing. I think, when they, I think when they started lashing on his back, I think that was agonizing. <laughs> According to Isaiah, Isaiah said they took him by the beard and plucked it out by the roof. Yes, sir. But you know what? <laughs> but, 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 but once you're dead yourself, it doesn't matter what they do. Hey, hey. See, once self is dead, they can do whatever they want to do. <laughs> hey, hey. He took this. But it's interesting, the scripture wanted to point out that he did not cry out. For those things. No, I did. But he cried out when he when that separation. Amen, man. You see, I'm saying, I'm just, I'm just trying to put a point out that 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 see a dead man physically may not react to anything going on in this world, but that spirit of him, that soul of him, is reacting to something, and that is being in the presence of being separated. And that's something we can't see. But oh, yeah. And that, and that, that separation was good. That was critical. That's amazing, guys. That was he was, he was spiritually connected all the time and never been separated from him. Nope. In that moment, he separated. My God. My God. And he, and he agonized. He agonized because of it. And I think that's what we feel. Because we're born separated. <laughs> and I remember the scripture that it said that the, the that the creation itself owns groans for revelations of the Son of God. Way for us to get back in position. I think the thing that is really it is a great process, uh, brother. I think the thing that's really profound about that thing, when people talk about crying out, is is that what separates you? Yeah. Us. Uh, we did. He took. Yep. I don't know about you, but he took mine. <laughs> yeah. you, you're looking at, you're looking at yeah. what we did to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We did it because we, we, put, we put him through the ring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, but yeah, you know, did. I wanted, yeah, we did. I wanted to bring a point out about dying yourself and denying yourself, uh, and I was going to use the elders' uh, example. Uh, a few weeks ago, when he was very upset about what's happening in Macon, the question I was starting is, the, the, it was bothering him to the point of anger and frustration. And when you crucify yourself, that means you God. Don't, You see what I'm saying? In other words, that should not matter. It's not to say you're supposed to do something to try to help the situation, do things with that. We're not doing that, but when it bothers you internally, where you lose your peace, right? Where you lose your joy. That that now that is something that has to be denied, right? Because the dead man doesn't doesn't respond to that. And I think that's what sometimes we all lose our joy when we sit there and we get mad about things that we have no control of. I can't, I don't control Brother Addison's blue shirt. I just can't control that. Oh, so you don't, don't like my shirt? Look, look, not that I have a problem with his shirt, but the problem is that there's somebody that has a problem with what he got on. It ain't nothing wrong with what you got on. I'm just using it as a, use it as a prop. But some of us get, we get, you ever notice that? We get angry about what somebody else is doing. And that, that loses, that's not what a, a denying the self is all about. We have to let it go. I mean, we have to sit there and have our peace and continue to do his work. 
and not get wrapped up in the, the things that distract us. Because that's you not. Know, I, 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 I think that the um, well, what we have, um, I think I, we have to be very careful as to how we respond. You know, what we respond after the Spirit of God, we respond to the flesh. Yeah. And I, that that is that is man. And, and every, every situation that we find, it's going to be inherently there's going to be a spiritual link. There's going to be an emotional link. There's going to be there may be a physical link. And 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 <laughs> at, at some point we have to. You know, be cautious that the link that we have established in the response that we're giving is not of our flesh, exactly. but it's of the Spirit of God. I'm yeah. sure that God looks at some things and say, like, man, that's an atrocity. I can't put over that one. And he will impart that spirit to somebody to address that issue. Right. And, but, but what I find out is that it's normally not God trying to bring men closer to each other. Right. It's God trying to bring men closer to him. Right. <laughs> you know? Right, exactly. And, you know, I think about it is the fact is he... Well, oh, because if you deal about anger, if you deal about see anything that the Roman government was doing, exactly. you know the Roman government was wreaking havoc at the time that Jesus Christ came to the earth. He they were crucified people like his lunch. Right. He's and a, but he didn't say these low down evil Romans, y'all need to rise up against them and destroy them. As a matter of fact, I think one of the disciples was a zealot. Yeah. But he didn't preach. He, he didn't did. preach uh, social activism. He did. He, he preached. He preached. The call, he preached the root cause for the oppressor and the oppressed. Exactly. And what I've experienced in this life is that there is just as many jacked up of oppressed people as there is oppressed people. Exactly. I mean, oppressed. Right. You know, we're evil across the board. Whether you're a slave or a slave master, evil just has a citizen just seep right in that heart. Yeah. And so, my my my, and, and, and what I expressed concern of Black Lives Matter at that point, and especially with our club in you know, making, is the fact that what we were doing wasn't the solution. It, it, it's almost like it's a waste of time. Because if the kids got them to address every law that was on the book that was not right, or do you put laws on the book that spoke against races, which there are many, nobody could make nobody comply with them. You know, and you could encourage them and make it difficult for them or uncomfortable for them not to comply with it. But look at the number of years we dealt with racism and now we see manifestations in our generation now the last few months that's showing us that this stuff didn't change. People aren't a kid is jacked up as they were six or seven years ago. So it wasn't a solution. The solution is and has been and will be the Lord Jesus Christ literally changing that person's heart. Right. So I, I can go to a guy and preach civil rights, but it'd be better. You went to that If you didn't take care of the human heart, you'll benefit yourself somewhere else. Exactly. Else. So, so the part he was saying is, and is, you don't get wrapped up. You address issues, but you don't let it lose, take control of you, right? You know what I mean? No, you, you can't. You can't. You can't. And, and, and that, yeah, and, and the tense is the devil. I mean, when I was a young man, I operated solely in the flesh with no awareness that there was a spiritual aspect to it. That's where I went. You know, you had a dashiki and the big afro and the, the big <laughs> stick out your head and the fist raised in old nine yards. And coming out of that suit, you know, changing that suit, was, you know, coming out of that flesh is a difficult process. Because there was a great affinity that I had for our people, quote unquote, our people. Right. But I have to embrace the reality that my mother and father, and my mother and brothers and sisters, those who will my father, which is in heaven. And not only I have that problem, but I know a lot of our white brothers had that same issue. Hey, you hey, know, hey. across the board on both sides, you got to get away from nationalism and, hey, and hey, racism. Hey, Elder, Elder, hey, as, as we get ready to close up, it's 11 o'clock now, but look, look. That reminded me of Moses, Brother Addison, when, when Moses killed that Egyptian for, for, for yeah, a, a, one of his fellow brothers. He tried there to do it flesh. You see that, Elder? He, yeah. He, yes, he, sir. He said, I, I, I guess the scripture didn't say he, looked like he was, thought he could deliver them. Right? Yeah, he did. That's what he said. <laughs> he <laughs> see, I'm saying, when we tried to do it under yep. our power, and we get all yep. frustrated out of our power. Failure. Yep. And then we say, so I'm just showing that as a good example of when we say we will let God do the deliverance 
And if he used you as an instrument, that's great, right? But for you to lose any of that peace that surpasses all understanding, right? Yeah, you always make the image that it's him that's doing it. Yeah. That you know what? We told Moses, he said, I have heard the cry of my people, and I have come down. Yeah, there you go. He sent, he sent Moses off to do something Moses tried to do 40 years earlier. But he gave Moses no credit. <laughs> he said, Moses, you know what? I agree with you. These people need to be delivered. I'm going to send you to go get them. You see what I'm no, saying? No, I, 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 not you. I, I. And <laughs> now Moses trying to back out. I can't even talk. He said that boy yep. has been doing for 40 years. You, you need some help. Man. Yep. You ain't ready. Yeah, go down, man. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. If you do this on your own. Right. If it's part of you to pour, you got to kill somebody, you ain't ready. You got it. You need some more condition. Hey, look, you need more discipleship. Amen. <laughs> so, you know where it says that no flesh is glory in his presence, right? No, no flesh is glory in his presence. No flesh. That's the no. whole because if you're trying to do it in the flesh, then you're going to try to glorify yourself in the flesh. And yeah, we ain't got nowhere to lead nobody. No we ain't got no hell no to put them in. We can't empower them to do that. So now it's, a, it's a waste of time. Amen. Just get to the, Amen. Up to the so if it's bothering you, if it's called, if that's why I use the word Black Lives Matter. I'm saying this, yeah. if it matters to you, you might be in the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think? Lord drive you to go deal with it. And then it preach to the Black Lives Matter people. Y'all save me. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know Jesus? Come on. See, I'm but saying. It's coming. Right. If it matters, it's in the flesh. So, Brother Addison, you want to pray us out? Sure, I do that. Yeah, because this oven is 1120. <laughs> pray for Adam. Hey, when you're praying, I'll pray for Brother uh, Elder Johnson to save travel. You still driving, Elder? Still driving. Y'all almost got me here, man. 30 more minutes, I'll be home. I, I, was, <laughs> I was working with you, but you, you take a long enough to... <laughs> Yeah, I was on my almost here. Okay. And hey, before you pray, too, but, uh, Bishop, we, we're wrapping up, but you want to. You, how about look? The text, they didn't hear the text, I guess. They didn't read the text. So <laughs> he said he said you beat it, but you said that. So look, I, I I would like if um as we go a little deeper, let's check out the um, the Good Samaritan parable I was telling you about. Remember that the Good Samaritan one? Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's, let's look at that one. Uh, okay, it, okay. Since we don't look at the Mother all parables, and we all talking about discipleship. Let's let's look at that form in discipleship. All right. Right. Okay. All ready. All right. Let us pray. Well, Father, we truly thank you again. You know, you're always faithful, and uh, you always are available, and you're always speaking to us. So we just truly, truly thank you. We thank you for your son, the Holy Spirit. We thank you for all that you have done, will do, and continue doing. Yes. We thank you for the words that were sown in our hearts today, that the revelations thereof uh, have been rooted and grounded on good ground, Father. Come on. Praise God. For the insight. We thank you for the uh, the joy, Lord God, that is this in our soul. Yes. We give you glory and honor and we give you praise for for, for what is happening in our lives. Uh, we, we we are determined to deny ourselves. Amen. To take up our cross and follow your son daily, Lord God. Uh, with you always in our minds, Lord God, that to, to live this life is not to have joy of flesh. Mm. But, but to go forth doing the will, knowing that there shall be persecution following, Lord God, yeah. and that it is for Your Word's sake that these things shall be coming, uh, crossing our paths. But to always be mindful of You day and night, 
to always keep you in our presence, to always walk in the spirit, Father God, to never lust after the flesh, to never try to please this flesh, Father God. So we, we, we are thankful for the knowledge and the understanding that is being done in this platform. We give you the glory and honor for that, Lord God. We know that these things are not happening because of anything that is in and within us other than your spirit, Father. Yes. And we recognize that and we praise you for that. Uh, Lord God, I, I ask that you continue to bless us with your presence as we leave this particular forum that you watch over Brother Johnson as he continues forward in his progress to his destination. Yes. That your spirit dwells with him in a way that he shall be able to proclaim your son yes. and to share the gospel of the kingdom with all those who he may come in contact and that includes us as well, Father. Yes. We thank you for this beautiful day. We yes. shall enjoy uh, and we look forward, Lord God, to our next gathering. If it be your will that Amen. we should be in this flesh. So we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And these things we say in your son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. And a happy Mother's Day. I love y'all. Keep, keep each other.